Hey guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, All About Female Hypergamy, Eight Ways to Use It. And guys, this article is written by a woman, and pretty much this whole article is going to go into exactly what female hypergamy is, and pretty much explain women how to go about it, how to make it work for them, and justifying it every step of the way. And you're going to see throughout this uh, article, guys, she's also going to use uh, talking about the way male nature to kind of justify female hypergamy, talking about how pretty much all guys want to sleep around and hook up with as many women as they want and get the hottest woman. And there is some truth to that, obviously, at a certain period in your typical guy's life. But I'm going to point out along the way where it's different uh, with regards to the situation with women as they are today. And you're going to see what I'm talking about here because pretty much it's like this. In this day and age, guys, you know, the joke is, is that you have so many women that are in their 30s and 40s oftentimes complaining that they're alone and they can't find the right guy. But when we all know darn well, there's plenty of great guys out there. And usually these women that are usually good looking or I'll say they're good looking for their age in their 30s and 40s and a lot of them were really hot when they were in their late teens and 20s. They had countless opportunities for good guys, but they kept passing them over thinking that they could get somebody better and better and better. And it's one thing early on to get somebody good for you. Okay, I can understand that to a point. But when decades keep going by and these same women are often trying to f passing over really good guys with good status, make good money, all these things that you think your typical woman would just be dying for, they just keep feeling entitled that they should get somebody better. And then they find themselves in their late 30s and 40s alone, living alone, crying because they can't have a family because they have no husband and no kids and all that. And believe me, guys, I know women like this. I know multiple women like this. And so it's ridiculous that they're there crying about it and carrying on and blaming guys because there aren't any good guys out there. Well, they had countless opportunities. And they're the ones that start YouTube channels and write articles, complaining there's no good men out there, and, and assigning blame on guys. It's absurd. And so this article is basically written by a woman to help encourage this. It's crazy. So let me get into this here, and you go, I'll point more things out along the way. Starts out saying, You're probably wondering what, what female hypergamy is and why it matters. Basically, it's women's biological need to find the best mate possible. When women are searching for men, they're looking for those who will help them create the best babies possible. They may not be doing this intentionally, as this is an innate trait. Men and women are different in this way. Biologically, men have a tendency to spread their seed. They have an innate need to have sex a lot. Men are polygamous by nature. Polygamy means they seek more than one mate. That's because of their biological need to have many children. So is she trying to say that uh, that women aren't polygamous? That women don't like to have lots of dudes? Is that what she's trying to say? Because I beg to differ about that. She goes on, Still a little confused? Don't worry. In this article, I will cover the definition of hypergamy and how women use this innate trait, intentionally or unintentionally. What is female hypergamy, according to this, this woman? In simple terms, female hypergamy is when women marry up. Naturally, women want to be with the best man they can find. This doesn't necessarily mean they are gold diggers, though. It just, it's just the tendency of all females to find the right male for procreation reasons. Yeah, sure, for it's, all, it's all about just procreation and, and the future baby has nothing to do with those Prada handbags and living in a, the biggest house, the house bigger than all her friends, or her having the best car than all her friends, and going on the better vacations than all her friends, and nothing to do with that at all. Bigger bank account than all her friends. Women search for men they can admire, someone they can look up to. It doesn't mean he has to be powerful, he can have a great sense of humor, or be really smart. Women just want a man who offers her a higher status of some kind. The higher status could be his popularity. It just depends on the woman's point of view. And there is truth to that. You know, like, the, your typical woman, there are, there are things that all women are attracted to, okay? By and large, the number one trait is confidence in, in terms of personality, okay? So a guy that has a lot of self-confidence and comfortable with who he is and he has that charm and charisma with his personality and the confidence, 
that could take him far. Even if he's not that good looking, even if he's a little out of shape or whatever happens to be, that confidence will really attract a lot of women to him. But believe me, if she met a guy with a lot of confidence and she met another dude that had high status and made a lot of money and all that, the odds are she's going to go with the guy that has the status and the money. Keep in mind that this is a biological trait. She keeps coming back to this. So instead of a, instead of being uh, having a personal responsibility for a lot of this shady type of ways a lot of women have, or very superficial ways, keep uh, pointing the finger to biology. She says the female body is made for procreation, and naturally women want to find men who have the best status for their children. Back to the kids. Being pregnant is a nine-month investment for a woman, so she wants to find the right man to father her children. A woman may not even realize she's doing this, though. Goes on, why is this topic so hot right now? Men are talking about this issue a lot right now. They seem to be under the impression that all females are gold diggers or want men who are better than them because women are innately evil. Of course, not all sources say this, but some men are pretty vocal about this hot topic. Well... As time is going on, a lot of that, what she's saying right here, is proving accurate. Does it mean it's all the time? No. But it's a lot. So this can't be denied, and it's, men have a good reason for talking about this. If I was the only guy talking about this, that'd be one thing. But if I've seen countless videos from countless YouTubers and read countless articles from guys and, t and countless emails from subscribers and talk to people that is all kind of the same story, then obviously something's up here. She goes on, this really couldn't be further from the truth. Oh, for God's sakes. If a woman does subconsciously search for the best man she can find, is that so wrong? First, she's doing it subconsciously. Putting the blame on the subconscious, not doing things intentionally. You know, the whole thing about accountability. <clears throat> it's part of her biology. Second, men do the same thing. Oh, really? Third, doesn't everyone want to find the best person they can find to be with forever? Okay, I got I to gotta interrupt and say this. Okay, she's first she's saying it's subconscious. Then she's saying that men do it. And then she's saying about the whole forever thing. Well, we know in this day and age there is no forever. There's no one person you're with forever. Look at the divorce rate. That's completely unrealistic. Uh, also, with regards to men, yeah, definitely guys when they're younger, in the teenage years and 20s, let's be honest here. Most guys would like to hook up with every single hot chick that crossed their path. Okay? that I'm not going to deny that for a fact. You know, If they could do it, they would right? But eventually, a lot of guys, that whole scene starts to get old. It really does after a while. And a lot of guys, if they can get a woman that is good looking, good body, fun personality, easy to be around, good in the sack, a lot of guys eventually would be cool with that for a very, very long time. Really, in some cases for life. This is back in the old days when, you know, it, things aren't as they are right now when it comes to marriage and things like that, okay? I'm going back far here. But how things are now is that women have the idea that they constantly are entitled to somebody better and better and better. You got a lot of women, thanks to things like feminism, telling women they deserve the best and absolutely the best no matter what, advertising slogans, uh, constant validation that women get on social media and dating apps from fucking guys that kiss their ass and everything. You got your average woman that isn't that, they aren't that good looking, they're okay at best, but they think they're nines and tens. They feel entitled to the top percentage guys. And mathematically, that's impossible because there aren't enough top percentage guys to go around to everybody, but they still feel entitled to it. So they'll keep passing over constantly good guys, good opportunities with the idea that they deserve the, you know, top five percent of dudes out there it doesn't work that way and those top five percent of guys are going to get go for the women that are tens nines and tens or they know darn well don't get serious at all because their their bank accounts are gone eventually things like that so yeah a lot of guys are looking for the best looking woman they can get but also a lot of guys are well aware they're realistic they know that hey given my how much money I make, given my personality, given my looks, given my confidence, I can get an 8. I can't get a 9 or a 10, but I can get an 8. 
And they're cool with that. They'll live with that. You know, sure, they would love to get a 9 or a 10. And believe me, if they could get a 10, they would. But they're realistic and know they can get some 8s. Are there guys out there that are literally like 4s? Guys that barely get off the freaking couch, that don't take care of themselves, have no personality, and feel that they're entitled to a 10? Yeah, there are guys that freaking clueless out there. Absolutely true. But it's rare. On the other hand, how many women out there that are 5s and 6s think they deserve guys that are 8, 9s, and 10s? No joke. I've no women like this. It, they're clueless. Okay, not all, but a lot. This is why you get so many women that are in their 30s and 40s and are crying and sad that they're alone with no guy, no chance of having kids and a family because they that ship has sailed. They passed up all these great guys, feeling that they were entitled to somebody better and somebody better and somebody better. No joke. Again, I know lots of women like this. So I don't want to hear this crap that, oh, we do it too, or it's just biology, or shouldn't you look for the one forever? Come on here. All right, that had to be said, guys. I know some of you guys get fed up because I share my points of view throughout the article, but this needs to be said. This is my style. So if you're going to bitch about it, go someplace else. Anyhow, she goes on. Also, just because a woman is looking for the best man she can find doesn't mean she's a gold digger or shallow. She just knows what, she, what trait she finds attractive and is looking for a guy who is illuminating with this feature. An example would be a woman falling in love and spending her life with a man who has a great sense of humor. Not so horrible, huh? There are plenty of guys out there that have a great sense of humor, okay? But, there, but some of them have a laundry list of like 57 different things that guy needs to have along with the sense of humor to, to supposedly make her happy and, and meet her standards. So that, it was not just one thing. This is nonsense. She goes on, how is this topic related to divorce? According to the Library of Economics and Liberty, men are naturally polygamous while women are naturally monogamous. Ha! Ah. Where is it? What, what, what research have they done? What, what, what universe is this an accurate thing here? But when it comes to divorce, women have initiated them the most. If we consider those traits, we can safely say that men cheat and women divorce them. No. Women are more common to initiate divorce. Women are more common to initiate breakups, but it isn't always because the guy just did something wrong like cheated. See how the blame is going on the guys. A lot of times it's because they're not happy or they feel like they can do better or who the hell knows. It just doesn't work out as most marriages don't. Okay? But just to, uh, to assign the blame on the guy because he's cheating. No. Women cheat. Trust me. How many videos have I done on this subject? How many articles have, have I read? How many emails have I gotten? How many stories have I heard? Come on here. However, if we were to consider females' innate need to be hypergamous, we would say that most women are looking for someone better. So they may be initiating divorces because they are looking for better mate. Uh huh. Someone who has so, someone who has the different or more traits than the husband they are currently with. When they find a new person, they initiate a divorce. Okay, that was one of the first accurate things she just said that I finally agree with here. Of course, this is not a true 100% of the time, but for those who believe strongly in the power of these innate traits, the causes of divorce make sense. Men want many women, and women want better men. So men sleep around, and women upgrade. If only life were that simple. Yeah, how about uh, women sleep around, and then and, and hopefully try to get the better guy and kick the, kick the husband to the curb and things like that? Or they, they make it that guys are constantly sleeping around. I got news for you. Most guys, when they get to a certain age, especially guys that get married, they're not the ones that are sleeping around usually. It's usually the opposite situation because generally guys are loyal. If she takes care of herself, if she is good to him, if she's loyal, if she's not a pain in the ass, if she's fun to be around, she's supportive of him and his goals, he's going to stay loyal to her. And of course, she's got to be sleeping with him. Don't get me, Don't forget that. But guys generally cheat if, if it comes to the point that he's not getting anything out of it. You know, she's getting all the benefits of him paying the bills and providing a life for the family and all these other things. But he's not getting any, any sex. He's not getting any other things. That's a lot of times when guys step out. And yeah, sure, you do have guys that will just cheat to cheat. But that's rare in comparison to the majority of guys here. Goes on. So now she's going to break into the different things of hypergamy here. She says, eight ways women use hypergamy. Is your boyfriend really husband material? Does he have any of these traits? Now she's going to break it down here. Number one, appearance. 
It makes perfect sense if a woman is practicing hypergamy. She wants the best looking guy she can find. Usually a woman marries the man she plans to have babies with, and if this man is very handsome, she knows she's got a good set of genes to pass along to their children. Some women do want to be with a very good looking men, but not all. For some, they just want someone they can find attractive so they have the physical chemistry and can stay alive. If anybody says that women don't that, that looks aren't important to women, they're out they're full of shit. They're out of their mind. Women looks are very important to women, but generally looks are not number one on the list. Typically, confidence in terms of personality, that's the number one on the list. Looks are important, but they're not the number one thing. Okay. And by the way, about uh, having to find a guy that's good looking so they can have good looking babies. Believe me, I've seen two good looking people get together and have kids and the kids weren't exactly the best looking kids. So let's keep that in mind here. All right. Number two, wealth. Ding, ding, ding. If women are biologically hypergamous, they want to provide the best father for their future children. They desire someone who will be a good provider for them and their future family. If a man is rich or has a nice inheritance to look forward to, he is that much more appealing to her because she knows she'll be taken care of. I'm not going to say there are no gold diggers out there because there are, but some women just want to know they are well taken care of and don't have to worry about money. It isn't just about the kids. It isn't just simply that they want to worry about money. Let's be honest here. You know, you get uh, a woman that has a choice between two guys. One guy, let's say two guys, and they look exactly the same. All right? They look exactly the same in the looks department and good personalities and all that. And you get one guy that makes 200 grand a year. That's going to give her a very nice, comfortable life. Okay? Really. And the other guy makes $5 million a year. Who do you think she's going to choose? $5 million, because that's not just comfort. That means all the Prada handbags she wants. That means probably a boat. That means her driving a sweet-ass car, living in a mansion, all these type of things. Come on here. So we know it ain't just about comfort. Comfort's certainly great. But if the opportunity arises to have something beyond comfort, you bet your ass she's going to go for it. Uh, number three, confidence. A man who is sure of himself is quite appealing to women. They see this as a good sign, an indication that the man's self-esteem is high, which is very attractive. This personality trait, self-confidence, is a great thing to pass along to her children. It can biologically be passed on, or the man can be a good example to his children. She says, confidence is extremely sexy. Can this appeal wear off? Sure. That doesn't mean it does, though. Anyone who is super comfortable in his own skin is hot and will have no problems in their love life, unless they are cocky, or unless they are too cocky. So guys, it is true. I will absolutely say this. Absolutely, confidence is generally the number one thing for women in terms of what they're drawn to by personality and all that. So you get very comfortable who you are in your skin. You don't give a crap that anybody thinks. Believe me, that will turn a lot of women on. Okay, just there's a difference between uh, being confident in who you are and being a cocky, arrogant asshole. Okay, and don't get me wrong. There's plenty of cocky, arrogant assholes and get women. Don't you? Know, they can absolutely, but. Generally, if you're just purely confident in who you are with no fucks to give, it's going to be very appealing to many. Just a tip for you guys that are here because you like women, you like dating and hooking up with them, just to let you know. Number four, personality. Have you ever, been on, have you ever seen an okay-looking guy who gets all the ladies? It's weird, right? Women naturally flock to a man who has a great sense of humor or who is very charismatic. These traits usually just come with the guy. He is born with them or develops them early on in life. Someone who can hold the attention of the room or who can keep people entertained with his winning personality is sexy. Of course, not all women agree, but for many, personality trumps wealth and, and wealth any day of the week. Yeah, I disagree there. I disagree on that one. I got a friend who is married to, to a woman who's in her early 30s, and I met him... He began, I became friends in his late 20s, and she was about 26 at the time. And hands down, she was probably one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. No joke, okay? And this guy, he's overweight. He uh, doesn't take care of himself. He's not the best looking guy, but the dude is so fun to be around and is so cool and friendly and easygoing. He's got the great personality and confidence. He got her. And women love this dude. If he was single, this guy would be knee deep in pussy, okay? So it goes to show you, and he makes decent money, but he's not rich. So there is a lot of truth to this about the confidence and personality, just letting you guys know. He's extremely comfortable who he is and doesn't give a shit. Uh, number five, intelligence. Having brains is a huge turn-on. 
and intelligence is a trait that can be passed down naturally from man to his children. So if a woman is naturally hypergamous and is looking for someone smart to have kids with, she'll be watching closely to see how intelligent man really is before she makes her move. While it doesn't seem like, at times, handsome guys don't have to try so hard in life, so they, they don't work as hard in school and don't have the brains the nerdy guys do, there, there may be some truth to this statement, but not all the time. There's plenty of handsome nerds out there. Good looking or not, intelligence is hot. I've never known many women that say they want a dumb guy. Never. Uh, number six, ambition. Very big one. This is another one of those traits that can be naturally passed down from father to child. A woman who's looking for someone ambitious probably loves the idea of having a greater status in the world. She knows her family will move up in the ranks sooner than later, and that's just fine with her. While it doesn't seem like this, at times, handsome guys don't have to try so hard in life, so they don't work hard in school and don't have the brains that the nerdy guys do. There may be some truth to that statement, but not all the time. There's plenty of handsome nerds out there. Good looking or not, intelligence is hot. Well, let's boil it down to the ambition. Ambition is drive, which can often lead a guy to have success. Success means money and comfort and providing and all those all those nice things that come along with it. So again, for you guys out there that are into dating and relationships and pick up and all that and want to improve yourself with women so you can have uh, better opportunities, if you're an ambitious guy and you have a lot of drive and you're, trying, you're taking yourself places, believe me, that will help you big time in that department with women. Trust me there. But these, as you can see, guys, are all these things that they are looking for, you know, to get the best guy. I'm not saying that, uh, like I said before, I think women in this day and age are just absolutely delusional to keep thinking they can just keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the perfect guy. And then guess what? They're too old to attract that type, same type of guy they wanted. And, by, and mathematically, it's impossible. But these are things breaking down all the different things they go for. Just to just, just let you guys know here. Uh, number seven, heart. Some women don't care about the status, but instead find a man's natural ability to be kind and compassionate to be hot. A woman who's looking for a kind man hopes that he'll pass, this along, pass along this huge heart of his to their children. Kindness is both innate and built trait. Some people are born with it, others develop it over time or don't have it at all. You can take away all the other traits in this list for some women because having a heart of gold or having an abundance of kindness can win a woman over easily. So if you're a guy reading this and don't have all the other things for you, work on this one. This is a trait that you can actually do something about. Yeah, I mean, obviously a guy with a good heart is going to, you know, attract a lot of women. But unfortunately, a lot of these guys end up being the pushover types. The guys that are seen, their kindness is mistaken for weakness and they're taken advantage of. And, and so this is why a lot of guys become hardened over time. after some bad experiences. And who do you think gives them these bad experiences? Women. They give them the, these, these uh, dark hearts, so to speak, you know. And by the way, I don't want to hear that, you know, a woman finds a guy with a great heart and he doesn't have a whole lot of money or things like that, then that's okay and she'll love him forever. Uh, no. Uh, number eight, popularity. All other traits aside, when someone is super popular, it's hard to not be curious as to what that guy's deal is. Curiosity drives a girl crazy too. A woman may wonder why he always has a flock of people around him and sees his popularity as being very appealing and attractive. She knows that she, she will get popular as well just because of her association with him. In other words, popularity is like status. And the best example is when you're in high school and how women, how the girls, they're always after the most popular guys, which are typically guys that were soccer players, football players, captain of the soccer team, captain of the, of the football team, basketball players, you know, these type of guys. These guys are typically the popular guys. These guys had status, they were in the spotlight, and these were the ones that women were drawn to. And a lot of times these guys could, become, could be dumb as a post, or they could have no personality, or could be assholes, doesn't matter. They got that status, and that status takes the women up. So this is accurate, what she's talking about here. But this is why, in this list of things of the in, the women have of importance, and for the subject of hypergamy, I would say flat out here, wealth, popularity, and probably also um, ambition, those are the top three, because they're all going to boil down to status and money, which will take her up and give her that life that she wants. And so many will just wait and wait and wait, they can and pass over great guys have a lot of these traits 
to get the guys with those top three traits. And then they get to their 40s and they're crying because they don't, they're alone. And I know so many will like that. Uh, so now she's going to break down to the frequently asked questions, breaking down these terms here. So I'll just read it anyway because it's part of the article. And she says, what is, hy- what is a hypergamy relationship? This is when women marry men who have a specific quality or feature that's desirable, like wealth or a great sense of humor. Notice she says wealth first. Women want to marry men who are the pick of the litter, the best. They want to create the best babies they can with these men. What is hypergamy and hypogamy? Uh, Hypergamy is when you marry up. Hypogamy is when you marry down. It's like when a 10 marries a 3. That's an example of marrying down. If you are a 3 and you marry a 10, you're being hypergamous. This is often a subconscious action. Yeah, bullshit. If you're and right, the fact that she says being a three and marrying a ten goes to show what I'm talking about here. Okay, in what reality is is a woman who's a three is going to get a ten, or what reality is a guy who's a three is going to get a woman that's a ten? Dream on here. What is a hypogamy marriage? A hypogamy marriage occurs when one person marries down or marries someone beneath them. It's the opposite of hypergamy. For some reason, one person marries someone who is lower than them. An example would be a woman who is a 10 marrying a man who is a 3. That will never happen. Never, 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 never happen. Okay? And it's completely crazy here. Uh, next one. What does MGTOW mean? Listen up, boys. This is from the female perspective. MGTOW is men going their own way. It is an anti-feminist social movement typically compromise of online men who don't like the way women classify men and want to leap out on their own own to define men in their own eyes. Check out the Urban Dictionary for more colorful wording. Well, there you go. That is her view. The only word she didn't say was the I-N-C-E-L word, which a lot of women want to label guys like this. These are her words, not mine, but this, see what I'm saying? See the negative tone she has here about this? Hey, it's just guys. There's different definitions of it, but basically... I think we can all agree is that guys are basically, yes, doing their own thing. They don't need relationships. They don't need marriage and all that. And they see things as they are, not as they want them to be, but as they are. And that's that. They're living their lives on their terms. There's de- different definitions of this and everything. There's different uh, degrees. But that just pretty much is the gist of it. But the negative tone is put on this. And, of course, saying about guys that are online basically bitching about it. Well, guess what? There's plenty of guys that are going this way one form or another. They aren't just sitting around typing on Twitter or YouTube or whatever. They they are living that life. They are making things happen for themselves, and they're being the real deal. Uh, next one. At what age does a man look his best? It depends on the man, but some sources claim men hit their peaks between their late 20s and mid-30s. Some men don't hit their peaks until their late 30s, as they mature and begin to take better care of themselves, so it depends on the motivation of the man. Generally, a guy's peak in terms of looks and personality and status and all that shit is typically in the guy's 30s and 40s. Because that's when guys, you know, because it's like this, guys. When you're young, when you're in your late teens and early 20s, unfortunately, you're the bottom of the totem pole. Unless you really have some status and some money, maybe it comes to your family, you're really good looking, really charming with women, all that. But you're still the low man on the totem pole. While women in their late teens and 20s, they're, they're, they're at their prime. However, when guys get to their 30s, when they've been working on career, working on themselves, developing maturity, uh, finding out really who they are and accepting who they are and all that stuff, that's when a man's prime is in his 30s and 40s. That's when they're making more money, they're, they're, the things that they've been working hard at are starting to materialize, all these good things. So, 30s and 40s. And in conclusion... We have covered hypergamy. Uh, we have covered hypergamy definition and hypergamy meaning in detail. So you should understand it now. The bottom line is hypergamy is all about having a higher status. So there you go, guys. This is the woman's article explaining all these things and, and justifying why women do it and all that. And like I said, it'd be one thing if. A young woman was looking for a good guy for her, the best she can get, realistically. If she's an eight and she's got a good body and takes care of herself, good personality, she's going to try to get a guy that she feels that she can, best she can get. The difference is, compared to how things used to be, is in this day and age how things are, these same women, whether they are an eight or a five, feel entitled to the top percentage of guys. And I said before, mathematically, that's impossible. All those, There's not enough guys to go around for all the women that want that. But also the idea that 
their fives and sixes or sevens, but they're not going to get guys that are nines and tens because those guys are going to get women that are nines and tens. But these same women will wait and wait and pass up great opportunities, great guys for decades. And then next thing you know, they go from being 21 years old in their prime, even if they're a, a five or six or seven, to being in their 40s. And that ship has sailed. And they're then complaining and whining and crying because... No guy wants them, or they're alone, or they don't have any kids. And then they assign blame on us. So it's idiotic. While guys, on the other hand, yes, like she said, we definitely want to hook up with a lot of women left and right if we can. Most of that typically happens in the teenage years and 20s. But, but eventually, as guys get older, they get tired of going out every night. They get tired of going to the club. A lot of times, when you get to be in your late 30s and 40s, and you're a busy guy, a good night's sleep is a great thing for you. That That's more exciting than going out, right? And eventually, you can get one good woman, like maybe you could have 30 years ago, because it's much more possible, if she's good looking and takes care of herself, fun to be around and loyal, supportive, most guys will be like, all right, I'm, d- I'm done all that shit. I'm just going to hang with her and go from there. So, but we stop eventually. But a lot of the women now, they keep going, trying to get next, 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 the best guy. So that's what articles like this and women writing things like this, putting this in women's mind and justifying and saying it's okay, is going to lead to a whole generation of more women that are going to be alone and crying about it and blaming guys and all that. And just watch the YouTube channels pop up, guys. Watch them pop up in the years to come. If they're not here already, about women telling guys to man up and uh, do their thing and, and, and settle down and stop screwing around. And, you know, meanwhile, those same guys... They would have settled down, but they kept being passed over because they weren't good enough. And then these guys have learned how things have worked. They've learned female nature. And now they're not going to settle down. Now they're going to go their own way and make their own lives the way they want it to be and have fun. So anyhow, that was a good thing to do. It's a long video, guys, but I want to cover this in detail. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.